the main two things we talked about today is slope intercept form and point slope form. So these are equations of how you write lines. Okay? Uh, who remembers what slope intercept form is? Good. Y equals mx plus b. Right? And you need two things to write an equation in slope intercept form. What are those two things? The slope, which is m, and the b, which is what? The y-intercept, right? The y-intercept. So, for example, if you had a line like this, if you had an equation like this, the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is positive. So, this, the number in front of the x is the slope. The number without the variable is the y-intercept. If you were to graph this, you'd go to positive 1 on the y-axis, right? Then you would go down 2 and over 1 to the right 1, right? And it would be a downhill slope. That's stuff we've seen before, slope-intercept form. Okay. Then we have this thing called point-slope form. Point-slope form you use when you're given a point and when you're given a slope. This is point-slope form. Okay. This is point-slope form. You plug in your slope right there and you plug in your y-coordinate of your point and your x-coordinate of your point right there and there. <coughs> so this is when you have a point and a slope. You plug in your slope here and you plug in your point here. The reason this is useful is because it's very easy to go from this to slope-intercept form, okay? So, for example, if I said, give me the equation in point-slope form of a line that goes through 2, 4 with a slope of 3, okay? And you had to plug that into point-slope form. It would look like this. You would take y minus the y-coordinate. What's the y-coordinate in that situation? 4 equals m. m is 3 parenthesis, x minus the x coordinate, which is 2. So that's in point slope form, and it's very easy to go from point slope form to slope intercept form. All you have to do is distribute to get rid of these parentheses. So you distribute that 3. I get 3x minus 6. And then I move that positive 4 to the other side of the equal sign by adding it. Add 4 there. Add 4 there. And I get y equals 3x minus 2, because negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And now that's in slope-intercept form. So if you're ever given a situation where you have a point and a slope, you can use point-slope form to help you put it into slope-intercept form, because slope-intercept form is the much better one to graph in, right? We would just go to negative 2 on the y-axis. We'd go up 3 into the right one. So first, find the slope between those two lines. <coughs> I'll give you a second to try that, see what you remember. Between those two points, not lines. Slope between those two points. Remember the formula for that? M equals the second y-coordinate minus the first divided by the second x-coordinate minus the first. And it really doesn't matter which y-coordinate or x-coordinate you start with, but if you start with this y-coordinate, you need to start with this x-coordinate. If you start with this y-coordinate, you need to start with this x-coordinate. So it should be 6 minus 4 over 1 minus negative 2. That's 2 over 3 because it's 1 plus 2. Can't simplify that anymore. So the slope between those two point is two-thirds. There's a question on the quiz like that. Just find a slope between two points. Okay, you've been doing that for a while. That should be okay. Now, what if I said, I w what is the slope of a line parallel to this one? So parallel means two lines that never cross, right? Like, for example, these two lines we would call parallel. Those two lines, for as far as they would go, would never cross, right? Maybe agree with that. So if I wanted the slope of a line parallel to this one, what do we think that would be? It would be two-thirds, right? This is another thing you'll need to know for the quiz. Parallel lines have the same slope. Okay. It's a big thing you'll need to know. Parallel lines have the same slope. So for example, then, if I said, are these two points... Is the line between these two points parallel to the line between these two points? You would check this. What's the slope between these two lines? 5 minus 3 over 2 minus 0. That would be 2 over 2, which is 1. The slope of this one is 1. The slope of this one is 2 thirds. So these would not be parallel because they have different slopes. They would eventually cross, right? 
If they had the same slope, I'd be going up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. The other line would be going up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. Okay, parallel lines have the same slope. So you have to check if lines are parallel or not looking at them. For example, what about this? Are those two lines parallel? Yes, why? They have the same slope. The number in front of the x is always the slope, right? These two lines would never cross. This one would go through positive 1 on the y-axis, it'd go up 1 over 2. This one would go through positive 3 on the y-axis, would go up 1 over 2. These two lines would be parallel. The other thing we talk about are lines that are perpendicular. What do perpendicular lines mean again? Anybody remember that? They intersect how? At a certain point, how specifically? At 90 degrees, right. These two lines we would call perpendicular. Perpendicular lines, that means they cross at 90 degrees. So we want to know how do we tell if lines are perpendicular or not. Perpendicular lines, we say, have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay. Now, you've probably heard it called negative reciprocals, too. What's a reciprocal do again? Flips a fraction. Opposite means if it's positive, it's now negative. If it's negative, now positive. So, for example, if I said the slope of a line is two-thirds, what's the slope of a line that's perpendicular to that one? It would be negative three-halves. Okay. The opposite reciprocal. I call it opposite reciprocal because if it happened to be, let's say it was negative one-fourth, what's the slope of a line perpendicular to this one? It would be positive 4 over 1, which would just be 4. Okay. These would be perpendicular slopes. Whenever you have lines where their slopes are opposite reciprocals, then uh, they are perpendicular. Okay. So those are two big things you'll need to know. So for example, let's try... If I gave you four points... If I gave you four points, P, Q, U, and V, and I said, are P, Q, and U, V parallel? Are they perpendicular or neither? Find out. I'll give you a second to try that. So you need to compare the slopes of the two, right? So I'm going to compare the slope of P, Q. So I'm just looking at these two points. Take the second Y coordinate minus the first. Second X coordinate minus the first. One plus two is three. 9 plus 3 is 12. 3 over 12 simplifies to 1 fourth. That's the slope of that line. Then I want to find the slope of uv. So I'm looking at these two points. Second y coordinate minus the first over second x coordinate minus the first. That's negative 8 over 2, which simplifies to negative 4. So looking at these two slopes, they're not parallel because they have to be the same to be parallel. They're perpendicular, right? Because they're opposite reciprocals. So in this scenario, these two lines would be perpendicular because their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Now, if this would have been one-fourth and negative three, it would have been neither, right? They'd eventually cross. They'd be perpendicular. This would be something else you need to know also. I want to write an equation in point-slope form of the line that goes through that point with that slope. Okay. You will have to have memorized what point-slope form is. Okay. Again, this is point-slope form. Y minus the Y coordinate equals M parenthesis X minus the X coordinate. And you plug in the X and Y coordinate there and there, and you plug in the slope there. So if I'm going to write this in point slope form, I would take Y minus my Y coordinate, which is 4, equals M, which is 3, X minus the X coordinate, which is 2, and since it's minus the negative, I'm going to change that to a plus. There's point slope form. So if a quiz or test question asks you that, there's point slope form. Now, if I gave you the same scenario and said, instead of in point-slope form, I said, in slope-intercept form. So same scenario, different question. Well, this is still useful because since I had a point and a slope, I can now put it in point-slope form and then change that to slope-intercept form. <coughs> It's always the same thing every time. First, get rid of the parentheses by distributing. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. 
and then I just move that four over the other side. Again, I can't add four there because it's not a like term. So I get y equals 3x plus 10. And there's slope intercept for it. Exactly, by just simplifying, excuse me, that point slope form into slope intercept form, right. So if you give it a point slope form, you just stop right there. If I said slope intercept form, then you could just simplify that into slope intercept form by distributing and getting y by itself, basically solving for y. Right. It says write the equation in point slope form line that goes through those two points. Now the problem in this example is in point slope form, you need a point and you need a slope. I gave you two sets of points, so you could use either one for the point, it doesn't matter, but I did not give you the slope, right? But you already know how to find the slope between two points, right? You're going to have to find the slope yourself here. Second y coordinate minus the first, second x coordinate minus the first, <coughs> 4 over 1, which is 4. So the slope between these two points is 4. I just had to find that part myself. So that's going to go in here. Now, for here and here, you can use either this point or this point. It doesn't matter. For, so there's actually two correct answers for this for point-slope form. So let's just say, for no reason, I picked this point, this set of points. So I would take y minus the y-coordinate equals m x minus the x-coordinate. There's point-slope form. If you'd use this point, it'd be y minus 5 equals 4, parentheses, x minus 7. Now, again, I could change the problem, and if I went back to the beginning and said, I don't want it in point-slope form, I want it in slope-intercept form. Well, you already have this done, so then you just put this in slope-intercept form. Distribute to 4. <coughs> 4 times negative 6, negative 24. Add the 1 to both sides. y equals 4x minus 23. There it's in slope-intercept form. So point-slope form can help you get it into slope-intercept form. Questions with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, there.